Good morning, guys, on Frequented World, out in the garage, getting ready to take you on our third test in our series um, regarding braking levels. How far are we going in B0, B2, and now you asked for it, B5. Cars plugged in. Boom. Oh, ho, ho, ho. shut the flap. Shut the flap. Oh, that hurts. So I don't know what the temperature is today, but... I had a comment from one of the viewers about there was a 10 degree difference in ambient outdoor temperature on the last test. Guys, the batteries in this car are cooled and heated. So, and 10 degrees is not going to make any difference in the distance we're traveling on these batteries. My average distance traveled in six months with this car from April, uh, which was zero degrees this year in Canada, right up to September, which now we're getting back close to those zero degrees, it hasn't changed. My average driving distance over those six months has always been uh, right around the same, 43, 44 kilometers. When you take the highway and you're doing 100 or 110 kilometers, you're gonna get 35 kilometers on a charge in this car. If you sneak through town the long way and you do 60 or 70, as I've shown, you're gonna get 50 kilometers. That's the bottom line. Um, we're gonna finish this test anyway to show braking level five. Power on, Dr. Spock. Charge complete. The trip armor is already reset because I'm anal. I'm like that. Oh, Dr. Feel Good. I am feeling good. 10,604 kilometers. Be sure to follow all traffic rules. And as you can see, I'm clearly showing you, it's off. We're not going to turn it on. I'm going to freeze my butt off just for you guys. Some other important factors you guys are going to need to know for this test this morning. Um, yes, I had a light breakfast, a banana and a cereal bar, um, uh, followed by a bowel movement. And then I put on my socks. Today, for the B5 test, I chose a light sport sock. Um, now, this I did wear a heavy work sock on the first test, so... Couldn't be helped, guys. I'm sorry. And here we go, down to B5. Oh, God, I didn't show you guys. I didn't show you guys the guessometer. 47 kilometer guessometer range. Okay, there you go guys, we've got the dog running. And you're just gonna have to take my word that we're 200 yards from my house. As well, the ambient temperature outside, now that the car has uh, been out here a couple minutes, 15 degrees Celsius. So, all three of our tests are gonna be, the first one was 20 degrees, the last one was 10 degrees, and this one is 15. So, there you go, guys, that gives us a good range. It doesn't matter what temperature it is outside, B5 is not gonna come anywhere close to regenerating more power than the distance I can travel. And that's what I want you guys to keep in mind. Some people just don't seem to understand the methodology of this test, which is I'm not testing putting the car in B5 and um, coasting. You know, I get a lot of comments about that. So here's the problem with that, guys. Yes, we can coast in any level, braking level we like. The problem is how do you measure that? So you're trying to compare braking level five to braking level two or B0. How do you measure if you're coasting, in effect, you are in B0 within the B5 braking range? Because you're coasting. You're not measuring the B5 effectiveness. You're measuring how far you're freewheeling, how far you're coasting. So the only way we can set up a test, which I've done, is to measure the distance with removing your foot from the pedal. If you remove your foot completely from the pedal, you can then measure your distance traveled via coasting or your distance traveled via you're slowing down and you're regenning power and that's going to come out in the end where you're going to travel further 
when your foot is on the gas pedal, you're using that electric that you've regenerated. That's the only test I can measure, guys. Okay, so 11 kilometers in, 11 and a half kilometers, and the gas meter is showing 36, so we're right on target for what it was telling us we were gonna get. Well, the watchdog quit on me again, so I don't know, I've restarted it. And a stat that we didn't look at before, but we will look at at the end of this video is regeneration. Okay, so as with the previous two tests, guys, I am going to take my foot off and try to regen power, such as now, when there's nobody behind me. Basically, we're gonna hyper mile as much as I can when I'm on these back roads and no one else is around. I'm gonna try to maintain a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. Everybody's probably sitting out there watching this right now going, oh God, Gary's cranky today. I am, I haven't had my coffee yet. I bought one, I just haven't opened it. It was too hot, so. Cranky time will end here in about two minutes. Thank God the roads in North Bay are so bad. Honestly, guys, I'm on this road that has, um, it's upheavals from frost all over it. They need to replace this, and it's a long section of road. And so I can just take my foot off and everybody around me thinks, oh, he's just slowing down for these big potholes and waves that are coming up. No, I'm trying to regen power. <laughs> I don't know where you guys are from, but we have a very distinct way of dealing with uh, road corrosion and potholes and things here in the north. This is how we deal with frost upheaval. You see that? You just put a, a big barrier on it. So everybody knows, slow down. There's a huge jump coming up. See that guy's lights coming towards us? You can see every bump that he's hitting. These roads are terrible. Look at these roads. And all the roads are like this. Can you guys see that sign there? This is the other famous way that North Bay has to deal with huge road issues. We just throw up a sign. So if we don't, if we run out of pylons, we throw up a sign. Look at the size of this hump. Massive. <laughs> and you will notice that the sign is portable, so we can move it from hump to hump. We pay an analyst to decide, um, you know, where is the sign most needed. 20 kilometers in guys, gasometer is showing 27. And there's nobody behind me, so when I'm going around a nice tight corner like this guys, I am exaggerating it right down almost to a full stop. Trying to regen as much as I can for you guys, as unrealistically as I can for you guys. Look at that. Regen, regen, regen. And I guess of the three tests, I'm going to say that this one is the most unrealistic because you wouldn't put your car in braking mode 5 and get up to speed and then slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, which is what B5 is doing. And I'm doing this over and over and over again. So nobody would drive like this. A, their wife would kill them. I know mine. She's unhappy when I have the car in, you know, B2 and I take my foot off the gas and we slow down. So it's just this, this of the three is the most unrealistic. Um, you wouldn't leave it in there full time, you know. And those of us that are getting the best mileage, guys, we got 63 kilometers on my car. That's pretty amazing for a car that they say is going to get 35 when they sell it to you. Um, you know, we're using the coasting uh, feature as much as we can. That's the only way you can extend your battery. One kilometer left. I've got bad news, guys. It's starting to rain. Right at the end of this test, I'm just praying. Oh, there goes the whole test. Windshield wipers came on. Ah, that did not happen in the first two tests. I'm gonna have to redo this whole drive. 
There, just kicked on. 45.7. I'm gonna pull over here into a parking lot. Let's take a quick look at these uh, stats here, guys. I'm a little surprised that B5, um, we got the least amount of kilometers out of that. Um, but if you look at our coasting number, we only coasted 1.9%, and that was while I was in B5, I hit that B line, as I showed you guys, just uh, here and there. Not trying to, but you're going to hit that uh, occasionally. So if we look at this trip, um, our average speed was a little bit slower, which I thought it would be, 32 kilometers, because we're, you know, speeding up and then slowing down. We talked about that in the last uh, video. Our maximum kilometers an hour was 64. And let's look at uh, regenerative time moving with engine off with regenerative braking was 25.1%, okay? So let's go back and look at, this is the um, B2 test that we did, 47 point something kilometers. And the regen time we had on this one was 20.5, so very similar, very close. An hour and 25 minutes to do the test. The same route as the other two tests. And just because somebody is going to ask me here, I'll show you guys. This date, 2018-09-17, so September 17th, we showed a maximum charge of 36.3 amp hours. And in today's test, uh, on the 28th of September, so that's 11 days later, we're showing 36.2 amp hours. Now remember, the dog wasn't started recording right at the very beginning, so that might have actually been 36.3 as well. So either way, 0.1 of an amp, not gonna make any real difference to this testing. So I have all of that uh, trip data saved. Um, really 45 kilometers versus 47, that's pretty close. There could be some variance. Um, something along the way I, I don't know a gust of wind in the first test who knows but uh pretty much that is the end of my regenerative recuperative gains versus coasting freewheeling momentum gains okay that's what these tests were and we clearly showed after three tests uh b0 b2 and b5 um that b0 is going to take you further than the other regenerative braking modes. Now, to get the most out of your vehicle, guys, use them in tandem. Coast as much as you can, but use that B5 whenever you've got a big hill or if you're coming to every stop and you gotta come to a complete stop, use that B5. Paddle through all the way right down to B5. That's the way you're gonna get the maximum. And I showed you guys in a previous test, not part of this three, the maximum distance I could get on mine was 63 kilometers. How far can you go in your PHEV?